What's up, Mortgage Coach community? It is Friday, Mastermind time. Every Friday, 9 o'clock, we are here to bring value, bring amazing leaders to the stage. Got my wingman, Todd Bookstand. What's up, brother? You know, not a whole lot. It's uh, it's good to be back home and uh, broadcasting live and having, of course, a, a local guest. So I'm excited to uh, introduce our good friend that most people know from the Modern Real Estate Summit. But before I do, we've got our other wing woman, Deborah Bird. What's up, Deborah? Good morning. And Steve, I'm still waiting to do a uh, horse competition with you in basketball. So I've been practicing. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Talk about the rose amongst the thorns. Poor Deborah, you're stuck with all of us today. What are we doing? Hey, I'll take it. This is a great sandwich <laughs> to be in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, congrats on your new podcast with your sister. That's awesome. That's going to be fun. Thank you. Thank you. We'll yeah. have to have you on it. <laughs> hey, I'm in. Yeah, congrats on that, Deb. Uh, you know, the nerd and the bird, or the bird and the nerd. Uh, congrats on that. The guys. nerd make and sure the bird. She that. had to come first. It's all good. Uh, yeah. Make sure you make sure you share that in our group. So, so guys, we've got a really special guest here. You know, Steve. I call him Stevie D, just that I mess up the way I pronounce his last name all the time. But let me give it a let me give it a shot. Steve D La Vega. How do I say it, Steve? Go go back to Stevie D. You're, 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 I love you. You're my buddy, but no, De La Viaga. It's just like it's De La Viaga. There. De La Viaga. De La Viaga. There you go. Okay, all right. I got to get the D down. Didn't, didn't I say uh, De La Viaga? Okay. I didn't. You weren't even all close. Right. De La Vega, De La Viega, something like that. Yeah. That's all right. right. That's why we love Dave. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. So so I'm going to give my you know, why I think this guy is such an important person in both mortgage and real estate. And Todd, feel free to add on to this. Uh, but I don't know anyone that is better networked in the real estate space. You know, he's a, a former, well, not a former, he is an executive in title. Uh, he is a change agent when it comes to the modern mortgage and real estate space, because he knows how to blend local referral-based businesses with consumer direct businesses to drive conversion. Uh, you know, there, I really don't know if there's anyone that is working with more progressive, not both lenders and real estate companies to execute on that modern mortgage experience. Steve, real quick, how many different companies are you helping with, you know, call it referral base, lead gen, kind of this hybrid model? And, and how many yeah. of these are going through your network right now? Uh, so we have 854 teams. Uh, a team could be a brokerage or it could be, you know, Cody Gibson, Kyle Whistle, depending on the team. We had 127,000 warm connection opportunities last month. That means a consumer live on the phone with an ISA connecting live to a realtor, which we believe is the best form of lead currency in America. And because we're agnostic and we have, you know, uh, 97 brokerages represented in our 850 teams, People come to us like Ojo Labs, Ideal Agent, Realtor.com, uh, you know, Home Light, et cetera, and say, hey, we want to tap into this network of elite closers because all of those groups share the same commonality. Nobody gets paid until you close a deal. So you have to have good closers. And then how many <coughs> um, loan officers are in the mix as part of your yeah. program? I love this piece and I love our lender partners because you guys know it's been a battle last couple months. Um, we've got 51 entities, almost 272 loan officers. So like Greg Gale and his team, Kelly Zitlow and her team, Dustin DeHart and their team. So, um, and these folks are partnered with teams in our ecosystem such that the consumer gets a world-class experience. They get engaged with a top real estate professional. They go through the process. Then they get a top lending professional and Dave you're a big part of this most of these guys are mortgage coaches so they're educating the consumer on what rates mean what points mean what's the best way for you and lots of times they start off with saying hey I'm just going to tell you whether or not you've got a good deal or not let me just show you what it looks like and then over time they've earned their business into this so it's been a I love our lending community because they are really committed and right now what's great is no disrespect but a lot of the lenders who weren't ready for this shift are running out of the business and my folks are running into more lead flow because opportunities and leads have become more important than ever because now you're going to see less deal flow so you better have the opportunity button rolling in your world it's going to get tough yeah so 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 guys just no one is working with more people on how to generate quality leads 
how to convert um, and do that and to do that at scale. Uh, so I, I think it's a, an important conversation to listen to. Uh, another thing is I can tell you, we would not have done the Modern Real Estate Summit if it wasn't for Steve. Like when we had the Modern Real Estate Summit, he really was able to just go, oh, Dave, here's someone that would be great. And I'm like, it would be a dream. One email and they're on our stage. Uh, another little footnote for trivia is Steve is, do you still have the, the record as the highest scoring professional basketball player in the country of Australia? Is that, are you still I'm there? Still the, I'm still the leading point scorer in the Australian Basketball Association history. That's because I shot the ball a lot and I played a long time because I was old. But yes, I am still the leading scorer in the country's history. So he's a, he's, a, he's a great golfer and a great basketball player. Todd, anything you want to add to why this man is so special? Well, yeah, I mean, let me just say, I mean, because because Steve uh, lives across town from, you know, from me and I met Steve, gosh, more than a decade ago um, when he was leading a title company here in the local market. And um, Steve was the guy who could get the best of the best in the room together. Um, you know, when Steve talked, people listen and you've already heard it today, right? He's a straight talker. He's just telling people how it is. And I can remember when Steve then went national with title. And uh, I remember I was on spring break. I was totally disconnected. I'm like, I'm not talking to anybody. And, and uh, someone's like, hey, Steve would like to talk to you about uh, doing an event up in Seattle with your company. I'm like, all right, I'm on the phone and, and I'm there and I'll absolutely do that for Steve. And so I'm just excited that he's here. And you're right. I mean, Modern Real Estate Summit uh, wouldn't have been what it was without, without Steve and, and your help, Steve. And so um, I just want you all to know that you may not know Steve, but you need to know Steve and follow what he's doing. And um, I was just out, you guys all know Kevin Kaufman's a good friend of the Mortgage Coach channel, you know, the realtor who's been on more than anyone else. And I was having coffee with him yesterday. And he's like, you're not going to Steve's Crystal Ball event in October. He's like, I'm going, you got to go. And so um, we definitely got to have Steve talk a little bit about uh, that event that you yeah. have coming up, because I think it's a great opportunity for loan officers to go and network with real estate agents. And more importantly, to hear from the best of the best, Gary Keller, John Cheplak, who's one of the most amazing coaches that I'm aware of out there in the real estate space. And uh, you know what, Steve, you have like over 30 real estate agents who are pretty much the best of the best, right? We have, um, we have nine sessions, 32 of the top 73 agents in the United States, all speaking. And um, Renee Rodriguez is speaking, mm -hmm. Gary Keller, John Cheplak for a two hour mastermind on how to acquire human talent. And John charges $2,000 for 40 minutes, and um, he's given us two hours. So it's, uh, it's, just, it's the best agnostic real estate event in America coming. It's not a, you know, Realogy event. It's not a Compass event. It's not a Keller Williams event. It is a best-in-class real estate event. And, um, you know, we are blessed that we we're about 80% sold out. So if you have an interest, let us know. A couple of our lenders have done a really good job because tickets are scarce they've bought packages and then they use those tickets as some currency with some agents to bring people in so we've got nine lenders that have bought packages to bring you know their top five or seven or ten or whatever they wanted to do so they're the bringer of the value and those folks are sitting in that room we do it we record the entire thing we do dropbox links to every pieces of content every speaker had to bring their top two tactics that they're doing today to generate income and business. We put that all in a place that you can only get it if you attended the event. So it's a, it'll be the most content rich event this year. Love when it. Is it Steve? So it's October. So the, the, it's October 3rd. Um, it's in Vegas. Uh, it's at uh, Caesars Palace. We have a room block. We did our room block before the NFL season came out. The Raiders play the Broncos that Sunday. So I'm the cheapest hotel in Vegas Ooh. by half. So um, if you want to go, you can simply go to uh, uh, Robert, throw the link in. You can get Crystal Ball Summit. You can see who all our speakers are, who's presenting, what it looks like. But we've got uh, the number one military agent in the world, Levi Rogers, is presenting with us. We've got the number one real agent in the world, Spring Benson, presenting with us. We've got Cody Gibson. We've got, it's just going to be it's going to be the best content based thing you're going to be at. And again, what I love about it is we made them all bring two pieces that you guys could all use in your market to take back apply and adopt that you can pull out a Dropbox link. So you'll have content for six months if you come. All right, guys. So we put a link down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link in the show notes. Let's get into the topic at hand. So I'm going to frame this topic that we are moving into an era in mortgage and real estate where there will be the haves and the have-nots. Uh, I don't know exactly what the percent and how this is all going to play out, Who, how, what percentage of the market is the haves and the have-nots. But one thing I'm infinitely clear about is that the haves 
are going to crush market share. They're going to be, you know, doing even more business than they're doing right now. And right now, the haves and the best of the best. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Last time I heard the number, it was like seven percent of real estate agents did ninety percent of transactions. You know, I don't know what the split is today, but it's it's crazy. Um, and so we want we want you, if you're a mortgage coach, to want be one of the haves, be one of the market share takers, and we want you to be able to partner with the agents that are the market share takers. And so we're going to talk about the shift and how to win. So Steve, that's teeing it up for you. Um, where do you want to start with, with how to win well, in this shift that's I, happening? I want to first say, Dave, you are a hundred percent correct. What's happening right now, the last eight weeks, because we, you know, we're in this great seller's market. Now we're still in a seller's market, but it's a declining seller's market, but it's still absolutely a seller's market. Our bigs are getting bigger fast. I've never seen this before, Dave. I've seen teams with eight to 10 people that are now joining teams with 50 or 60 people because they want to bolt onto something bigger than they are. So your, your haves and have nots is a great analogy because the big are going to get bigger. And, and for us on the mortgage side, we've got to think about how do we connect into these ecosystems and networks and start to become somebody they think about, right? Because as you guys know, everybody who's doing transactions has someone. So we're going to talk, if it's okay with you, a little bit about kind of the conversations that we're asking people to have, the mindset around what we want you doing, and then how you connect and get into these things to get business. That sound okay? Let's go. Okay. So number one, um, you know, our realtors have learned and our lenders have learned too now, the consumer is a little freaked out. All they see is the national news about how, oh my gosh, they don't understand that when the Fed raises the rate, it might not necessarily raise the mortgage rate. They don't get it, but they hear rates are up. They're seeing inventory up everywhere. They're hearing there should be a recession, um, you know, inflation at 9%, uh, you know, wars. They're hearing all of this. So they're confused. Now, you guys know this. Real estate is a localized message. So the national news has very little to do with a localized message. So here's where we are. I'm in, if you take the United States, I am start in Seattle, big smiley face all the way through Texas, all to Florida. So we're in about 78% of the transaction in America. This is where we live and breathe with our network. Those places are all in good to very good markets still. Again, the market was up here. You listed a house, you sold it in a day or a week, multiple offers, great. Now you have a declining seller's market, but still a seller's market. So our conversations now with the consumer look like this. We acknowledge, gosh, you know, I'm going to hold off a little bit. I'm not ready. I don't want to buy yet. I don't want to sell yet. Now, we've had people that did it the wrong way. The wrong way is, oh, but it's still uh, all-time low for rates. Oh, it's still a great time to buy. Oh, it's still the knock it off. The ones that are winning build rapport in the conversation first. And this is exactly what they say. Listen, I totally get it. I totally understand. Do me a favor. Let's, don't worry about the rate. Other stuff. Okay. Why were you moving in the first place? They go right back to why. And generally, that disarms the consumer. And then they say, well, you know, we need a bigger house because I'm working from home now and I need an office. Or da 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 da, -da I'm looking for help here or there. I, I, we've got to go because we need enough room for my parents. Whatever it is. And they go, okay, great, got it. Well, the reality is we do have more choice than we've ever had before in terms of finding something. So if I can find the perfect house, are you saying you're not willing to move? Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. Okay, so here's what I understand. I understand your why. I understand what you're looking for. And again, I won't bother you unless I can find the perfect house. Those are the conversations that are getting conversion and opportunity. You guys know as lenders, we've had years of not enough inventory. The other thing that's happening that's better now used to be, this is why you want to start talking to your listing agents and hear me on this. When the home was up here and you, know, you could sell it in a day, they had to go find their home first. They were going to go live in next. They had to go get a, a mortgage or a deal. I got to find this home first or I, I can't sell this. I have nowhere to go. Well, that's now changed. It's changed completely in six weeks. Now the consumer's like, man, I see prices are dropping. I see people Homes on the market, I see them having multiple open houses. I wonder what my home's worth. I've got to see what I can get for this before I go buy. So my listing agents now are getting at-bats up front. 
So then they can take those leads and give them to their lender because now the consumer's like, man, all right, I'm going to list this now, see what I can get. So now that listing agent's involved early on to go, okay, great. Well, let's, here's my lender. Like, uh, we're, you're going to be in that 610 to 599 range of motor sale is. Here's going to be your net. Great. Okay, now I know what I'm going to get. Or I've got to get 589 for me to get the house I want. Okay, great. So our listing agents have referred more leads to their lending network in the last six to eight weeks than they did the previous six months because now that consumer is coming to them first instead of going outside of them and going to look for a place and then coming back and listing their house. It's listing first, then buy. So as you think about that, um, that's something I want in your mindset. Uh, secondly, two things tactically you could be doing right now. A lot of your realtors that you have that are doing 30, 40 deals a year, which would be a, a, a smaller entity in the world we live in, they're scared. Here's the reality. Action eliminates fear. You got to get them to get out, tell a story, have a success story. Right now, more than ever, circle prospecting matters. Right now, more than ever, third-party customer testimonials matter. Right now, having an open house and marketing it to the neighbors, having a door knocking session the day before, having cold calls afterwards. When you sell something, follow up with a just sold postcard and announce it. Now we have to go back to marketing the things that we actually do. Our folks have gone the other way. They're doubling down on their marketing spend. They're louder than ever about when they're having a win, when they're getting a closing, because now they know they have to. Okay. Um, secondly, tactically, as a lender, make sure, do some fun things that engage them. We, one of the best, it's a hack that I use now all the time. So you should have your network of people in your database, especially if you're in mortgage coach, you've got a database or a CRM, whatever you're using. Okay. Do me a favor on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Hey, we're out there working too this weekend. By the way, to all my realtor partners, buy a hundred dollar electronic Starbucks card and then email it out to your entire database. Go, if you're out there working this weekend too, coffee's on me. And if you need a pre-qual or pre-approval, let me know I'm here for you. Boom. And send it out. I love doing that. And then I'll do things like, well, we'll see what your speed to lead is. Because if, if you don't get the coffee, the hundred bucks runs out, you lose. You can do 50, you can do a 25, you can do a hundred. Do something. I do one of these every couple of weeks. Hey, listen, just thinking about you guys. Now what's happened is my team would be like, if I wait two weeks, they're like, hey man, where's our coffee update? We're ready. We're watching for this thing. So you're teaching them to pay attention. 25 bucks every two weeks, 50 bucks, whatever you want to spend, it's well worth it. It tells people you're working, you're paying attention and you're thinking of them. It's a simple, easy hack. But the key is you got to do it every two weeks, once a month, whatever your thing is, do it consistently. People miss this all the time. Yeah, man, great idea. I'll do $200. They do it one time. And they never do it again. So don't so confuse Steve, tenacity with being more important than consistency. $25 yeah. a week, every week wins the game. I love that message on consistency, and I want to put an explanation mark on it. Uh, just before this, I did a prep call with a, a loan officer I'm going to be interviewing at a sales rally. And he, you know, this is like a $120 million, $190 million a year performer. And, and it was like my biggest takeaway was consistency. I do this every morning before night. And then, and, I, and, it, and it was like, even when in the detail, because it was about alerts. He goes, before nine, I'm calling all my credit alerts. And then when I get into the office, I start doing my just listing alerts. Um, Steve, I wanna get your opinion on something uh, because you know, now you know, we're, we're building, you know, Mortgage Coach has gone beyond being just presentations. You know, Mortgage Coach is now, we're calling it a borrower intelligence platform, uh, but, but it's really built for both lenders and loan officers. And I think I know the answer for loan officers, but I don't know the, the answer for realtors. So this is what most lenders database looks like. This is what just about every realtor database looks like. Uh, but, but Amazon, Rocket, and Zillow, you know, and others, there are sophisticated players. They've got customer insights. You know, they, they know who's shopping mm -hmm. for a mortgage. They know whose credit score just went up. And yep. what we're doing is we're building out this ultimate insights platform. Uh, 
Now, the cool thing about it is not only does it provide insights, it also creates a mortgage coach presentation. So, hey, here's a consumer who's got this much in equity. They've lived in their home for five years. They, they might be a move up buyer. And, and it creates something. But tell me what you think for realtors, you know, like we're trying to build this borrower intelligence platform that one uses big data to identify the lead in AI and then presents, what do you think is more valuable for a lender to bring to a realtor? One, an equity alert where we can set triggers based off of home value, home equity that, you know, we're partnering with an agent and we really want to nail it. Two, a listing alert, you know, where, hey, whether it's a FISBO or realtor, it, it just hit MLM. I'm not so sure how that's going to be valuable, although I do know realtors that want that. Database insights. So, you know, we know when someone just got married, we know when someone had a baby, when they had their first kid, uh, when they hit empty nester's age and they might be a move up, uh, when they got a new job. Uh, and then, of course, now, the way I see these cash out alerts, these are like hugely valuable for loan officers in this market because it can identify who, who would be a good cash out refi. But what we're teaching people is these are also great move up or move down conversations. Like when someone has so much debt, so much equity, uh, move up. So out of those four, what would be the best and most valuable if a loan officer brought it to a realtor? Well, first of all, they all have value depending on who the realtor is, Dave. And th th this is the future, right? You, the, the best currency any lender can have to form a relationship with solidify one or get a new one is having a transaction opportunity. But I would tell you, depending on the level of realtor, people do not want raw data. They don't. They don't have time for it. They don't understand it. They don't know it. So all of those have value depending on where you are. The question to you is, if I'm a, if I'm a lender, Dave, and your mortgage coach, you guys coach that person. Okay, there's a, there's a, um, uh, there's a, there's a, does it, do you guys ISA it? Do you guys call and communicate it? Do you qualify it and then bring it to the realtor when it's ready? Or do you just say, well, hey, that, here's an alert? Well, well, I think it's different in our platform. You know, the interviews I've done with the most elite mortgage professionals, they, they have teams. And they are adding value to it, you know. They and and they're even saying because because the thing is, a lender can do things with data that a realtor can never do, you know. 100%. Credit like like realtors, they don't have the, the they can't get credit score data, you know. They can't no. get a lot of that data. So what we're coaching is that the lender needs to add value to that data, both educationally with the presentation, yeah. and both yeah. filter. So you, so you're. You're exactly right. I was just going to ask you, it's got to have, you got, the data itself isn't valuable to enough realtors. They don't do enough with it, either. not very le less than our lenders. So the more you can move it from the top of the funnel to inquiry towards the bottom, that's the greater currency with the goal being, hey, I talked to this guy, I apped him, he's got to move, da, 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 that kind of thing, right? Now that currency handoff is very valuable. Same to the guy, hey, I've got, you know, 25, you know, FISBOs out there I'd like to give you that, that doesn't have the currency that it needs to in today's market. What about the, um, just to make a smart call, do many realtors have it getting alerts when someone got married or when someone has a kid? Is that a, a common Mo signal in Mo most baller agents database? There are three to five companies we call, we call it life event alerts, right? Divorce, marriage you know, bankruptcy, things that are life alerts. Those are all categorized, filed like a title report. So you can pull it out and get sent to the realtor. And then they'll use those as some of those leads that people call. Those are what we call the raw leads, kind of like a Facebook or a, a PPC lead or a life event lead. They're all just activities that say this could be something, right? Um, and those will go to their ISA networks to your point, but those will not go to their agents. None of my teams take that kind of lead give it direct to an agent because that's like taking a good bottle of water and pouring water in it with nothing a hole in the bottom it's just going to drip right out so that's why the more you teach to enhance that lead the valuable that qualified opportunity becomes when you deliver it so let's go around sense. the shoe yeah it makes total sense thank you for that todd any sure. comments or thoughts and then we'll come to you deborah or questions you want to ask steve well i mean going back to your 
you know, all the different alerts from sales boomerang. I mean, I, I, I love Steve's answer. You know, you said which one's most important and Steve said really it depends, right? That, that there's everyone is going to benefit in a different way. So that's just uh, the idea of knowing your database better and digging deeper with, you know, with your database. What are you seeing right now, Steve, as far as, you know, obviously you've got loan officers in your network connected with realtors in your network. For the loan officer who's out there in a market where maybe it's already taken by other loan officers and they can't jump in on yours, what do you recommend to them that they go out to do to add value to agents to, to get new relationships in, in this time? I, I will tell you that having the data that you've got there, start with that and try to get one qualified opportunity. One person says, yes, I'd be willing to talk to a realtor about what my home might be worth. Yes, we're, we're not moving now, but we're looking. Get a qualified opportunity. Please stop asking questions, lenders to realtors, that your relationship has not earned the right for you to ask. Realtors get called all the time. Here are the top three shittiest things to say. Hi, um, anything I can do for you? That basically means I don't know my job, so why don't you tell me? Bad model. Hi, uh, just calling to see if you need anything. Also awful, right? How about this? Hi, listen, I've got a qualified opportunity with one of my sellers, like the free confidence and obligation CMA. I'd like to refer it to you because I've looked at what you've done. I love what you do in your business. Uh, fantastic. Is that, is that, who do I work with on your team? Trust me, everybody now is returning that call, right? So I got a my big thing old is smile on my face. call I hear with you value, that. right? Call with something, call with currency that matters. I love it when someone says to me, you got a minute, Steve? And I always go, go. Yeah, you got one minute. Shoot. Because it's never a minute. And I don't want someone stealing time. What are you asking that has value? If we don't have that, then it doesn't make any sense. So you guys, your data that Dave just showed, if you can move that down the funnel, then it becomes a very valuable piece of currency. And when a realtor knows when you call and you've got a valuable piece of currency, they start trying to send you opportunities too. Yeah. And, and so guys, everybody needs to start thinking like a billionaire. And billionaires think about data. They think about intelligence. They think about insights. It starts with that. And then it's how can you add value to it? I love the quote. I wrote it down. Call with currency that matters. And we need to bring more referrals to realtors. You know, I always talk about lenders can be the single most valuable advisor to consumers and to realtors. But you know what? You got to execute. You got to have the data. You got to make the calls. Deborah Bird, any takeaways you want to call out? Any comments? Any questions for Steve? Well, the first thing that came to my mind is just, you know, kind of how we opened where Steve talked about, and in fact, he said the reason why he still holds the record today in, with basketball is because he took the most amount of shots. And so too many people are sitting on their database and have alerts or qualified people who could be a great opportunity, yet we're not doing those daily reps and winning by noon where we're having those quality conversations to even uncover where those opportunities are. And so it just kind of goes back to the biggest expense in your business is the missed opportunity. So take your shots, make your calls, discover who, if you don't have the borrower intelligence, then it makes it a little bit harder because when you can open up your day and you can start with those alerts and immediately go through, I always say it's, it's like fishing. You're just cleaning the fish and telling the agent which one to keep because they don't want to waste their time and they're out showing property. So do your reps win by noon and keep taking those shots because, you know, I mean, Steve nailed it. You, if you can have a qualified opportunity, that's going to win. So Steve, I want to say this to you guys. Dave, you said this right. Data is the new dollar. Put that in your mind. Data is the new dollar. The more data you have as a lender, the more valuable you become. As you learn to manipulate that data to get it to a what I call a quality introduction, maybe an appointment set. Those are the things that have the most currency today. So, so I have been saying for many years that, hey, mortgage professionals, if you treated your database like your single greatest asset, and by the way, that doesn't just mean you have a CRM. And that doesn't mean that you have contacts in a CRM. That means that you have insight so that you know you have the signals of who is most likely to refinance, list their home, or buy a home. You have signals. And by the way, that doesn't mean it's valuable either. It's now that you're putting time and energy, messaging, email, text. By the way, I should stop saying email first. Text email, because we live in a text first world, and, and, and having conversations that have value. But if 
tell me if you think I got this, Steve. If a, lo a loan officer is doing that, and they're not just looking for loans, they're looking for referrals to realtors. Like I would even say like, it's a text first market. And if you're a loan officer and you've got signals and you're making calls and your number one goal is to, is to have someone that says, yeah, I, I want a CMA. Will you introduce me to a trusted local agent where they could do a CMA, CMA on my property? First of all, guys, you're gonna get loans. Like if that is your compass, data, text, referrals for CMAs, if that's all you focused on, the cash out refis are going to come up. But here's what we do, lenders. We're always, we're like, we're looking for loans. We're looking for rate and term refis. We're looking for cash out loans. No, no, I'm going to change that. Like, look for value for your agents. And then I love that. Data is the new dollar. What are your thoughts on that whole mentality and that focus for lenders? I would make sure I had a resource and time allocation. We don't ever call something a database. At our people's level, we say, what's in your data bank? We call it a data oh, bank because it's a group of future buyers, sellers, referrals, opportunities. So every morning for two hours, I've got teams of 90 agents. 90 agents come in at 830 in the morning, and all they do is call their data bank, right? Because there's been, to Dave's point, someone's kind of raised their hand. They looked at a property alert. They logged in. They changed their search. They went from weekly to daily updates. They did something that kind of did this. And the agents for two hours in the morning attacked the data bank. And then their job in the afternoon is to book two appointments. So Dave's got, here's the order, right? First, I have consumers. I just have data. Then I've got to say, all right, what intelligence am I gaining from the data? And then do I have anybody creating an action with the data? And then can I two-way conversate with that data, which by the way, Dave, I want you to add something to your thing. Forget email. It's call, text, social, then email. Our, our data banks all have preferred social handle. And again, it varies usually by age, unless you're Deborah, who's just amazing and beautiful on everything. But most of us have like some, we're older. We're, oh, I like LinkedIn. I like Facebook. I like Twitter or, you know, uh, Instagram. But they put that in there and they, the two-way conversation has to be, you had three exchanges if it's not a live phone call. So I text, three exchanges. If I DM, three exchanges. By the way, you know what's winning now in most of our markets? DMs get a better two-way conversation opportunity than text or by phone, especially Boom. people so, under 32. So, so I want to make sure I heard that. So call, text, and when you say social, you mean DM them in their preferred channel. And then email is last. And, 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 and then I want to make sure everybody got this two hours of calling the data bank, by the way, I'm stealing that. I will be using that going forward, Steve. Thank you for that, Amen. uh, for Amen. the coaching with the goal of two appointments and for lenders. Well, well when we say calling, Perhaps. let's say this, it could be calling. It could be texting. It could be DMing. Pros it's prospecting. not emailing because the systems do it. You're right. It's prospecting for two hours. Right. Yeah. And again, the younger, the agent. I love this kid, Jonah. He's out of Utah. He works for my client, Spring Benson. He's our two agent. He's 21 years old, had his license four months. He's done about, you know, $7 million year to date. Loves our lead stuff. He only, he never picks the phone up and drives Spring crazy because she's more our genre, right? He's like, I, I hit my two-way conversations, boss. I hit the whole thing in 30 minutes. I got three appointments this afternoon. See you later. I'm out. Because that generation of kids, that's all social, right? And they'll, you know, so I'm just saying, you got, wherever your clients live is where you got to live. So as a lender, if you're old school like me and Dave and the guys, like, I'm a phone guy, man. Get on the phone, drive, two hours, call, call, call. But the truth is I'm being taught by our younger entities, hey, phones, you know, text good, social really good. So when they come in, they make them bring Dave 200 contacts in the day they start they they get hired so and then people go i don't have 200 contacts how many friends you got on facebook 580 we can find 200 people okay so they come with something to get started and then that's how they build their data bank then the team leader is bringing in rise leads bringing in you know fizzbos expireds you know what all his lead funnel stuff it all funnels into the data bank and then we're trying to get them remember just to go like this uh, uh, 
and, and it might be a divorce. It might be. So as a lender, what are you doing to bubble up some kind of this where you can get on the phone and have a conversation and educate? Because when you do that, you win. So yeah, guys, but, you know, you, you're, you're talking about people who do this every day, right? The average loan officer, you know, they might call for 20 minutes in one day a week if they're lucky. And so can you kind of nail that home? I mean, I know just like you do that the most successful real estate state aid teams have a mandatory daily minimum of two hours, some even three hours of dialing a day. And can you just like hammer that a little bit more? Like how loan officers You're, should be the, too? Todd's win by noon is so per the only part of the the only part of the day any of us have, lender, realtor, that we own ourselves is between about 7 a.m. and 10 30 a.m. So you because after that, reaction, problem, someone screwed up a loan, you need help, blah, blah, blah. So you better take care of yourself in that time. And the most important thing any of you can do on this call, it's not go into the office and make sure all your files are perfect. You should have someone that can do that. You need to be prospecting. So in that database, boom. And then I would make sure as I did that, and I got someone that kind of raised their hand, agreed, yep, we're going to talk. I would call a realtor right after I hung the phone up. Hey, Todd, just talked to my client, Dave. We're going to be doing a little bit of an app for him. He's considering going forward. You're the guy I've targeted to be his buyer's agent because you're a great partner of mine. Why don't you know I was thinking about you. I'm on this. I'll update you next 48 hours. Thanks so much. No one cares what you did unless they know you did it. So if you don't tell realtors you're out there working for them, that's it. So if I'm you for 30 minutes every day, no matter what, turn your phone off or put it aside on silent and focus on call, text, social. And, and you, by the way, we've moved away, Todd. We've gone away from two and three hours. Our big, we've, we've now gone from being what I call activity-based to being success-based. Now we say 22-way conversations. Now, you know what happens? The new dummies, it takes them two hours to have that. But the good ones, they're in and out of there in 47 minutes. I got my two-way conversation. I got my three appointments this afternoon. I'm out. You know what our teams say? Congrats. You guys should talk to Todd how he did that. You should spend some time with him tomorrow. Listen to what he says on the phone. So now we're outcome success based instead of just come in, dial for two hours. Da, da, da. Because as we've learned, as people's skill got higher, they did not need to have the same level of activity. And remember, nobody wants to be on the phone for two hours every day for five years. They're going to quit, leave, et cetera. When you tell them we need two way conversations, two to three appointments in the afternoon, that's our standard. That's what happens. Love it. Love it. Deborah, what does it sound like, right? 20 calls a day, five days a week, 100. So we've been talking about on Mondays on the Win by Noon uh, podcast. So yeah, and Steve, I'm, I'm curious on, have you implemented it all? I saw this on Instagram and you're right. Uh, I tell people all the time. In fact, my voicemail literally says, don't leave me a message. Shoot me a text if you want a quicker response, because I, I'm one that I don't like to be on the phone, maybe because I'm on the phone all day that if you need something, then text me. But I will also say I do not like when you don't have permission to text me because that is to me a little bit more urgent. It's, that if it's I'm more scammed, intimate. And if they haven't earned the right, you feel like, you know, it'd be like you and I going for coffee. And I'm like, let's get married and go to Vegas. Come on. You're yeah. like, whoa, man, how about a little dinner, date, romance? Same That's thing. That's a lot nicer than how I would have put it. Them. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and that's what I love about social. And we tell all of our clients, even the best content strategy in the world, how dare you ex expect likes, comments, or followers when you're not willing to give them out yourself times 10. So at a time when there's so many people who are no longer liking or commenting, that's a way to really stay top of mind and be your clients or referral partners, biggest fan and champion by just proactively every day. And I actually tell them this is part of your prospect time. You're doing 20 story comments a day. 20 comments on post and 20 likes. So that's- And then we, throw in there a $25 Starbucks card on Saturday saying, hey, I know, I know my who's out there working too. So am I. Coffee's on me. By the way, call me this weekend. I'm working. I'll app your client. I'll help them. You know how easy it is when someone goes, remember this human psychology. Most people like to have an equilibrium, right? Meaning when they take something, now they feel like they want to give something back. My whole job, why Dave said I built this whole network, I've got every speaker at Crystal Ball speaking for free. Because I said, if I pay one of you, I got to pay all of you, and I can't afford all of you. I'm asking for a favor. Will you come speak for me at my event? Every single person said yes. Because you know why? I made deposits in their bank account and helped them, and I never took a dime for it. Hey, man, if you help me get people by team, no, no, 
That's your team. It's your money. Do you. So now when I ask, I've earned the right to ask. So as a lender, every time you make a deposit, most people are like, man, I got to get Deborah a deal. She's been so great. My da, da, da. Now they start to feel an imbalance. So now you've earned the right to ask, hey, Deborah, I love you. I'd love to work with you. You got anything you can help me with? You know what? Uh, come with me to my open house. We always get people in there. I'm going to make you. Okay, great. Now you're in the game, right? Do you make deposits in your realtor emotional data banks every week? Because if you're not, it's a mistake. So guys, I want to summarize a few things. And I, if, you, if you came in halfway into the conversation, you're, you're on the call. We're interviewing Steve De La Viega. And uh, the CEO that was of better. Rise. That was better. <laughs> the, C, the CEO of Rise. This is a man that when the, the CEOs in the real estate companies, think of who the four biggest real estate companies in the country are, they call this guy for advice. This is a man that has 850 of the largest real estate teams in America that consult with him. He's got 51 lenders, 172 loan officers. Many of those are mortgage coaches. You guys know a lot of them. Kelly Zitlow is one where I've interviewed Kelly and him together. And, and he just threw down, just like he gave you the roadmap, like, like drilled it down. And I loved that concept because I've always talked, and I think I'm going to edit the uh, new loan officer playbook, Todd, because uh, in the new loan officer playbook, you know, we're very focused on, you know, four hours of prospecting time, uh, you know, how many contacts you have. But I really love this focus of 20 two-way conversations a day. I love this idea that it's, you know, it's two to three apps a day. And, and then, Deborah, I love how you piled on. If you are using social media strategically, 20 likes, 20 comments. Like, if if you're new in the mortgage business and you did this, you will outperform 80% of the people in your business. And if you're not new, and many of you in the industry right now, I'm talking to people that have been in the business for a long time, they have databases of 500 and 1,000 past clients, and, they, and they're not calling them. They're, you know, you don't have signals in your database. Like every single person in your database that had a kid should get a text and a call. Every person in your database that got a new job. Every person whose FICO score went up. Every person every time there's a, new... a birthday, do a 10 second video. Hey, Dave, thinking about you. Have a great day, brother. Just yeah, birthday, that. birthday alerts. Um, equity, guys, if one thing that has won over the past two years in real estate and mortgage, it's equity. And, and, and you should be calling up, giving your client equity updates and, and know what that looks like. So, um, Todd, Dave, with that, do you think it would be, you know, for those who are doing the CMA a day challenge and Steve, I don't know if you saw this from, um, it was Ken Pozek. They did the CMA a day challenge. They, they sent out 30 CMAs in July, which earned them 12 listing appointments of those 12 listing appointments. They got 12 closings to earn 80,000 in commission income just by implementing the CMA a day challenge. So Dave, that's what I was thinking about with the equity alerts. That could be a proactive way Ooh. to do. You could be, imagine calling an agent and saying, I'm going to get you these to help you get to the CMA. Let's partner here and I'll be your lead flow into this space for you. It's a great well, Steve, call. I don't know if you've seen the certified equity assessments from Lender Launchpad mm -hmm. of how lenders are partnering and marrying the whole delivery system of a CMA. So that way an agent can call it a CEA, which is kind of like a TCA versus an itemized fee worksheet. Um, so they're packaging that together and doing the CMA a right. day challenge based off the equity alerts. Well, so I like that. We, like we, we call it a home equity report. We don't like to say mm. CMA, it's been abused, right? A home equity yeah. report. What's that? That tells you exactly equity in your property and what you'd net if you chose to sell it. So, oh. Steve, I want to show you another idea. And then, Todd, I'm going to hand it to you for some Mr. Win by Noon updates. But another strategy that's running wild in the Mortgage Coach channel right now is buy downs. And this is an example mm. of a loan where, where there was a, a listing for 700000 That's in the left-hand column. There was a buyer that wanted to buy it for six thirty, And the listing agent said, hey, don't bother running the offer. Like, hey, we know we're not going to sell at full price, but we're just we're not going to counter and, and so the loan officer said, hey, what if the seller would pay three points, two points going towards buying down the rate, another point to reduce the cash to close? And they came to a, a, con, to a, to a um, compromise. This is, uh, this is Nicole Roth. She did 
390 million last year. And she's up, up 4.6, no, yeah, 4.6%. So she's actually up this year. And as a lender, she's going to realtors, you know, she's identifying a realtor's listing uh, and she's comparing a 2-1 buy down, a buy down versus price reductions. So she's, she's giving the listing agent solutions other than price reductions. And she's also helping build a bridge to the buyer other than lowering the price. And what happens here is that the seller actually um, you know, gets more cash at close because the buy down creates more impact. What are your thoughts on this strategy? And uh, you know, is this, do you like this? Have you heard much about this in your community? You're asking me or Todd? Say that again. You asking me or Todd? You. Well, I know what Todd's. Oh, I, no, yeah. I, I, love, I'm looking at this like if you, if you could do a video on this, send this out to your realtor network, and say, hey, I've got room for five realtor partners that I can put into my VIP two one buy down program that will allow you to have offers accepted at a sixty to seventy percent higher rate. Please feel free to give me a call back. I've only got room to do this with five. I'd make it a scarcity exclusive program that I deliver to only certain realtors in the network. And then you show that that every time you close one, loudly tell people, here's another one. They thought they didn't like the offer. We were able to do a two, one buy down. My seller won. My realtor got a $22,000 commission. Love partnering with great realtors. Boom. Guys, you just got a script from the man. Uh, I've been advocating and we've been talking a lot about this strategy. Uh, it's scaling huge in the community. I think every loan officer should be doing a buy down TCA and, and doing exactly what Steve said. So if you are doing that, let us know. So Linda Buchanan just said, just close two loans with the two one buy down. Nice. Great job. Used MC to show it. Linda, you're rocking it. Uh, um, Paul just asked, um, can you define specifically a two-way conversation? Steve. So um, if you're on the phone and they don't hang up on you, <laughs> that's a two-way conversation. So the phone is the best, also the hardest. In text or DM, it has to be three backs and forths. Hey, Dave, um, just reaching out to touch base on X. Who is this? Sorry, we're friends on Facebook. I saw what she closed that deal last month. I love it. I've got a similar opportunity for you. No, it's got to be three exchanges on text or DM. And, and three, three, three on wonder. behalf of the prospect. The prospect three. has to respond free. Yeah, three times. In the, win, in the then, win by noon world, I call it a quality conversation, right? You kind of have to think, well, did I actually, do we actually discuss something? Um, you know, be have a brief versus like I went through Keller Williams bold training and they have a contact where literally I call Steve, say, hey, Steve, I just sold a home in your click. And he hangs up on me just because Steve answered the phone. They call that a contact. And so so I, I view a two-way conversation as a quality conversation where you actually just exchange something of value with the person, even if it sets them up to be a future lead. It could just be your update call on a Tuesday, letting them know that their appraisal came in at value, that type of thing. But it's just really where you kind of know it. You know, if someone's like, hey, can I call you back? Or, hey, no, not interested via text. Then you know that's not really a conversation. And again, you guys set your own standard, but make sure as you go through it, um, it'll morph. People live up or down the, the standard that you set, right? So if you have a lower standard, they'll live to it. If you raise the bar, generally they'll live to it. So you want something that's doable consistently. Some of my clients are killers and they have a hard time. They run through agents too fast because they set the bar so high, everybody feels like they're failing. And then they'll do it well for a week or two. Then they can't do it for two weeks and they quit. Put it something you can do every day. That's why I love Deborah's and Todd's five by 20 to hundred. You can do 20 a day. That's not hard. You can do that while sitting on the toilet in the morning when most people are consuming content. Instead, be a producer and start engaging. Because if I looked at your consumption time, which thankfully the, the iPhone does, too many people will just consume and they won't give out those likes or comments or use it for prospecting so well, well let's be, be honest too, Deborah, session every morning you taught me this it's work now when i do social it used to be i scrolled and smiley face and da 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 but deborah taught me now i block time on it i get my phone out and my computer 
and I comment with five or more words. So it gets the credit for that. And then anybody that comments back, I immediately stay in the conversation. So it's a job now, right? Because I can't just casually scroll. So, and you were right, Deborah, that has changed the engagement in our world times 10. Well, and so I, guys, I just wanted to also share in case anyone's listening, I, I learned this on the Altos Research webinar. If you live in Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Austin, spots in Florida, the percentage of price reductions are above 50%, whereas most places are around the 30%. So if you're in an area where listing agents are trying to protect a neighborhood, the worst thing you can do is a price reduction and then that kills your comps. So be proactive, maybe do the TCA a day challenge in your office where you're targeting those properties that you see have had price reductions and now educate and be a valuable source to the agents out there who need help with a different strategy. So. Hey, Todd, hey, Todd let's, um, let's remind people about the TCA challenge poster. Do you have one of those with the gravity distance? Uh, no, I do because I'm back in my office. And so, yeah, I mean, this was, we did a free version of it. That's eight and a half by 11. So again, we're not always selling something, but there's a free version in the file section of the win by noon user mastermind group. Just go there, ask to be a member to say you're part of mortgage coach and I'll let you in. Um, but we do this big 11 by 17 foldable version, which is uh, TCA a day on one side. And on the other side is the CMA a day. So um, I think that that's a great opportunity. Deborah just talked about it. Steve talked about it where, you know, there's people who actually are doing that and creating conversations, right? More quality conversations, adding value, creating transactions, which ultimately is the currency that everyone is after. All right, guys. So we got a little less than five minutes. Um, Steve, I want to make sure, I think we already talked about your event. Uh, I know you still have some space for quality, qualified lenders who want to be part of your network. Would you mind um, just describing what, what the value is for a loan officer to be part of that and tell them how they can find out more? So we have um, educated our teams that the ecosystem participation is the most important thing. Meaning if you use the people, we get the ecosystem with you. And I always start with the elite teams because elite teams run businesses. They don't run practices. So they can say to their transaction coordinator, we're using, you know, um, you know, Deborah for all of our deals and we're using Dave for all of our title and they can have the ability to direct that. So we then do that. Then we drive leads at the agent level and they, we partner our lenders with a certain number of teams and they get a certain number of leads, obviously quality introductions. And then our lenders get to add people to the network that they'd like to add as long as they meet our criteria for being successful at the program. So if you're a lender that wants to be connected to an ecosystem, get purchased leads, not Facebook leads, not PPC, but actually get leads where the consumer has already talked to the realtor. You have their name, their phone number, their email, their search criteria, and that gets sent to our lenders who then get to reach out app them, edify the agent, et cetera. Because every lead to our lender is two leads. It's a realtor who won the alert and it's a consumer who's looking for help in buying or selling property. 81% of our leads are buy side. So it's a heavy buy side community, um, which is why our lenders do what they do. So if you have an interest, happy to help you. I just want to give you two things to think about in your mindset, okay? Number one, nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. So remember, as you get into this, data bank program, be relational. That's why I love the Starbucks card stuff. That's why I love the, hey, I was driving by the house we did four years ago and I was thinking about you. Be relational, it matters. And secondly, control the controllables. Control the controllables. Um, you gotta think now, I can control the mornings. I can control 20 calls every day, 20 texts every day, 20 DMs every day. You can control those things. If you start getting out here in these kind of markets, my best people are so much more focused now, so much tighter now. They're spending more now. They're recruiting more now because now they've been waiting for this, this market pulling back. And now a lot of agents, they just go like this. Oh, I'm just going to try to hang on. Our guys are the other way. Let's go run into the fire because now's our chance to really grab market share. So keep that in mind in your mindset. Love, love this, guys. I'm also going to put a couple links uh, because we've been getting a lot of folks who want, um, who have less than 10,000 records and want sales boomerang. So we are building a waiting list. If you've got 
uh, you know, less than 5,000 records. I'll put a link to get on the waiting list. If you've got more than 10,000 records that you'd like us to monitor on your behalf, I'll, I'll put a link for you guys to get a demo. Because uh, it really is, I mean, the borrower intelligence platform, it is the future of lending, but you can have it right now. Uh, so Todd, anything you want to do to wrap up? We got three minutes left. Any closing thoughts on your part? Well, I mean, uh, Steve, thank you so much. You added tremendous value as expected for, to the community, but always you just blow me away with the fact that you're just so specific on it. So I'd encourage all of you, even if you watch the whole thing, to watch it again. And I'll just reiterate what Steve said at the end, control the controllables, right? I mean, the whole idea of 20 quality conversations a day, 100 quality conversations a week, I think that's got to be your minimum standard in this market. Right. Steve talked about standards, right? We interviewed Andrew Paul, Navy Seal. He talked about standards. And if you don't have a standard for yourself, then you're going to get up and you're going to um, be the consumer, like Deborah talked about, right? You're going to be consuming, not acting and, and providing value. And so the bottom line is, is that you've got an opportunity. Um, even now, maybe some of you on the East Coast, it's already new, but you've got an opportunity just to pause when you get done with this call. And you've got the opportunity to pause and actually say, okay, I'm going to take action now and I'm going to make my 20 conversations come true before the end of the day, before I go home, that's my standard and just make it happen. I mean, in the end, if that's what you choose to do and you say, I'm truly committed to it, then you're going to get it done. You're going to grow your business and it's going to give you more of these opportunities to hand off to agents. Because as Steve said, you guys have heard it before. Every time we interview a realtor on here, you guys always ask in the chat, Hey, how do we get a meeting with you? And they always first say, yeah, you can't. And then they say, well, you know what, if you got a, a qualified lead, I'll have to absolutely get together with you for lunch. And so um, the bottom line is you guys know what to do. Now you just have to take action and do it. So come to Crystal Steve. Ball. There'll be 500 teams at Crystal Ball. Come to Crystal Ball. You have the biggest coaches in the world. If you want to get connected, come learn and meet people. I love it. Steve, if there was one book that has added the most value to your professional life, what is, what is just one book that you would recommend the to people? The single best book in building, going from an operator to an owner, practice to business owner, is The Four Disciplines of Execution by Stephen Covey. Boom. Um, Go get it, guys. When I, when I was at Fidelity, I took 3,600 salespeople, 245 managers, and we implemented that book. We generated about an extra billion dollars in revenue over the next 18 months. It's, it's the best business book. If you want a short, great read now, The Obstacle is the Way would be my Ooh. book I'm, I've read now and I love it. The Obstacle is the Way. Yeah, that's my son's favorite book. And uh, I wear Marcus Aurelius around the, my neck. That is one of my all-time favorite books. Love that, brother. All right, Deborah Bird, closing thoughts. Anything you want to say before we hang up the phone here? I just want to echo the fact that, you know, Dave, you said start thinking like a billionaire. And then Steve, you said the elite teams run businesses, not practices. So those of you who are struggling with getting the 10,000 records in your data bank, start attacking those financial advisors, the CPAs, where you can now get that annuity of income and adopt through their trust, their records for your data bank. And we've talked about that before, Dave, I don't know if you want to drop the link for Wally's interview, but if you don't have 10,000 records, you can get it if you start thinking like a billionaire and go beyond just one person at a time. I want you to go after the heavy hitters that will give you a hundred or thousand at a time. Yeah. You know, you, you said, so you, you were so good, Deborah, man. That was some uh, just beautiful closing thoughts. So I do want to show you all something because you said, um, what was it? Data is the new dollar guys. And, and that couldn't be more true. You know, we've got a new playlist here. It's called Sales Boomerang Strategies. And Wally is at the top because he literally took his database from, what was it, like 1,000 records to like, uh, I don't know, 22,000 records. Uh, yeah. So check, check this out, guys. You know, and then Josh Metal is number two on this. Talked about how he's helping realtors in this low um, inventory market. And it was all, it was all about data guys. You know, data is a new dollar. Guys, this is a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend. Take action, y'all.